Hello dear students today we are going to study a chapter from ISC history book the decolonization of africa in this part of the chapter we are going to study with the decolonization of ghana so after the second world war african nationalism spread rapidly because more and more african students were educated in britain and the usa there they felt the pinch of racial discrimination colonialism was seen as the humiliation and exploitation of the blacks by the white community naturally after returning from abroad they agitated for independence and withdrawal of colonial rule in the gold coast in 1920s when britain introduced indirect rule to traditional authorities opposition of the nationalists began during 1940s the movement gained momentum for independence after police opened fire in accra the capital of ghana on a procession of ex servicemen they were carrying peacefully a petition to the governor to seek redress of their grievances during this time joseph danquo and other leading nationalists founded the ugcc that is united gold coast convention in august 1947 and invited kwame nkrumah to lead the campaign for representative self government but nkrumah and danquo were ultimately arrested and jailed after the troops fired on demonstrators and a riot erupted consequently in 1948 As a leader of the government, Nkrumah faced a number of challenges. First, to learn how to govern. Secondly, how to unify the four territories of the Gold Coast, and third, to win the nation's complete independence from the United Kingdom. Nkrumah was successful at all three goals. On 6th March 1960, he declared Ghana independent. The country became a Commonwealth realm. The new draft constitution made a provision to surrender Ghanaian sovereignty to a union of African states. The main export of Ghana was cocoa and its production doubled. Forestry, fishing and cattle breeding expanded rapidly. Country's modest deposit of gold and bauxite were effectively exploited. A dam on Volta River was constructed to provide water for irrigation and hydroelectric power. Government funds were used for village projects in which the village people built roads and schools. Free healthcare and education was introduced. Nkrumah also gained prestige internationally. He strongly supported the Pan-African movement. He also supported the Organization of African Unity. which was set up in 1963 for maintaining foreign links with the USSR and China major problems faced by nkrumah were first nkrumah tried to introduce industrialization very quickly and for this he borrowed huge amount of capitals from abroad hoping to balance the budget from increased export but a sudden fall of the price of cocoa in world market left the country with a huge balance of payments deficit he was criticized that too much money had been wasted on unnecessary projects like the 10 mile stretch of motorway from capital accra to tema in 1964 he amended the constitution which made cpp the only legal party and nkrumah the president for life of both nation and the party ghana now became a one party state since independence the amendment thus tra- transformed nkrumah's presidency into a de facto legal dictatorship the opposition leaders were arrested and imprisoned for up to 5 years even without trial jb danquo was arrested and he died in prison In 1964 all parties except Nkrumah's own party were banned and even within his own party no criticism was allowed Nkrumah wanted Ghana to have modern armed forces so he acquired aircraft and ships and introduced conscriptions 
He also gave support to rebels fighting against the government of Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, which had declared independence from Britain in 1965. On February 24, 1966, while he was on a state visit to northern Vietnam and China, his government was overthrown in a military coup led by Emmanuel Kwasi Kutuka and the National Liberation Council.